everybody. Welcome to Deep Dive, the place where we dive deep. In a last week's sermon, some of the things that didn't make it, some of the things that did make it, and just a chance to recap all that you might have heard or heard about from the following week. So, last Sunday's message was fairly intense. It was uh, dealing with some of those heart issues. The things we've been talking about through this series, what lies beneath, it was pushing on some of those places and the experience of loss, how we process loss, how we grieve loss. The fact is every one of us has experienced loss. Lots of times we think about loss and it's related to the loss of a loved one, somebody passing away, but there are lots of experiences of loss in our lives, whether it's the loss of a job or maybe the loss of a hope of a job or loss of a relationship or the dream of having a relationship. The way that we encounter life is that we are going to experience loss in a variety of ways. What happens for most of us is that we try and just push on, push past, carry on with life. But if we are not willing to grieve the losses of our lives, we are going to be limited in our ability to to step into the future of what might be in store for us. It, It limits our willingness to love again. It limits our willingness to risk again. It limits our willingness to to step out of our comfort spaces because we're worried we might be hurt, we might experience more loss, and we might experience pain. And we are people that are pain adverse. We want to avoid pain at every possible step. But if we want to experience the life that God created us for and invites us into, it means that we need to grieve the losses in our lives. And that's not always a a comfortable, enjoyable experience, but it is a necessary experience in order for us to be able to and be willing to step out to trust, to love, to risk once again. We need to grieve those things that we lose in our lives. One of the great invitations that Jesus gives us as we read about it in the Beatitudes, it's in Matthew chapter 5 verse 4. It says, God blesses those who mourn. So often we have this like idea that Following after Jesus means that we're going to have all the enjoyable things of life, that things are just going to succeed and it's all about good things and continually moving upwards. But there is a reality. We live in a world that has pain and brokenness, uh, loss, and we will experience places of grief. And Jesus' words to us, blessed are those who mourn is an invitation to those places because then he says they will be comforted. They're comforted because he meets us in those places. He's not unfamiliar with grief and loss and yet he invites us to it. One of the things that I didn't get a chance to dive into or spend time with on Sunday in this message is some of the practical places of what does it look like to walk alongside those that have experienced loss. So often we deal with our own loss and we turn inwards and we separate ourselves and keep others at arm's length. When we know others around us have gone or experienced loss, lots of times our response is to avoid, to we're not sure what to say, we don't want to say the wrong thing, we're not even sure the right words or how to do anything alongside them. So I want to give a couple of thoughts as we think about what it looks like to walk alongside those who have experienced loss because I think one of the great opportunities we have, one of the calls that we have as the body of Christ is to be people who will grieve with those who grieve, to mourn with those who mourn, to weep with those who weep, that there is a redemptive opportunity to walk alongside those people. But it doesn't mean that we come in with all these like trite cliches, like we rattle off a list of all these promises to say things are going to get better, there's hope in the future, God's got a purpose in life. But to walk alongside those who've experienced loss really begins by just actually being present, like acknowledging the person, to let them know that they are seen and noticed and that they're not alone in this season and time of loss, to acknowledge them, to come alongside them. There, there's an, um, an ancient uh, practice, a practice that was common amongst the Jewish culture, and it was called the, the practice of sitting Shiva, and it was this practice of actually sitting silently for seven days with those who experienced loss, the loss of a loved one. And it is a, a practice that I think would be valuable for us in some ways, in some shapes and forms. We don't live in the same type of culture, in the same type of space, 
but what would it look like to come and sit alongside those who had experienced loss? Not trying to fix things, not trying to provide solutions or solve or like bring this sense of like extreme joy or celebration, but to just sit and be present with those who experience loss. I know from my own experience, even over the last couple of months, uh, the day we found out that my sister had passed away, we had a friend of ours. She works on a ranch. She owns a ranch uh, a couple hours out of town. And when she heard, she dropped everything. She came in, she stopped at the local bakery in her little community, at the local meat shop in her community, and she came bearing food to sit and be with us. Uh, my kids commented, she was a great friend, she's a total rancher, and my kids commented because she had come in wearing her cowboy boots with the spurs on them. She was legit working on the ranch and she just came to be with us and sit with us. It, it was significant for our family in that moment to be with people, I'm not trying to solve things or fix things, but just to be present. I think it's important for us that we would be people who learn how to walk with those who grieve and mourn. Because we have all experienced loss, we all will experience loss, and to walk into some of those uncomfortable moments, not trying to fix or solve or have the right things to say, but to be present, acknowledging people, loving people, and inviting them to encounter God who walks with them in those moments. That's the invitation of community and life together. It's how we navigate seasons of loss, the experience of loss, and move forward into the things that God would have for us in the days ahead. Love to hear what you think about loss and grief. I know we have all experienced it in different ways and it impacts us differently. Love to hear how it's shaped you, impacted you. Uh, as always, thanks for taking time to tune in. You can find us on YouTube, watch us, or you can tune in, join us on our podcast to hear more about deep dives into the sermons from the previous week. Take care. We'll catch you next time.